<laughs> now that's more like it, boy. <laughs> yeah, even if you're the most optimistic Sooner fan, I don't think 55 to nothing is anything that you could have envisioned. I couldn't have. Yeah, even if, if, if OU was on all cylinders, which today they were, offensively, defensively, you give the Sooners credit, especially um, after the you know the the Cotton Bowl debacle where Texas and I came in Texas for the game that they played a week ago against Oklahoma. They, they certainly deserved to win. Sooners obviously uh, were not focused on all cylinders that game, not even close. But seven days later, bouncing back, having a great week of practice, prepared for Kansas State, and again, continuing their mastery in Manhattan. Bob Stoops now a perfect 6-0 and in the Little Apple as the Sooners win again 55 nothing. First time, by the way, K-State has been shut out at home in 234 games. Okay, you got to go back to 1991, the last time anybody blanked them in Manhattan. By the way, the worst shutout home loss that K-State has ever had. Okay, so that's going back to the 19th century. For the Sooners, 5-1 on the season, 2-1 in Big 12 play. They get that great feeling back and truly earning a victory that they seem like had wrapped up pretty early. Sooners scoring early. It only took them a minute and four seconds for um, Sterling Shepard to get the first touchdown of the game. A great cutback that he made off of a catch, and he did the rest. And, you know, what really led to Oklahoma's offensive success in this game where Baker Mayfield had the five TD passes. You know, he was 20 of 27 through the air. And, by the way, most of those incompletions were drops. Uh, the success was really Lincoln Riley having Mayfield throw earlier than normal. You know, finding those receiving um, threats open um, right off the fly. And that really got uh, not only Shepard involved, but Westbrook, too. And Mixon, you know, he got the second touchdown of the game and had three catches and was OU's uh, leading receiver. Andrews, you know, Mark Andrews, you know, he was the invisible guy last week against Texas, but not today, making the impact with a touchdown. Uh, but Mayfield was certainly on fire on this afternoon. Um, K-State really just didn't stand any chance of breaking his rhythm. Five TD passes for Mayfield all in the first half. He was terrific. The offensive line, really all that was asked for them was just to hold their blocks long enough for uh, Mayfield to get rid of the ball quicker than he normally would, and that's exactly what happened. In fact, the Sooners... Uh, as far as total offense today, well over 560 yards, 568 to be more precise, and they rushed for well over 230. So offensively, the Sooners taking advantage of nearly every possession. Those first 25 minutes, it was 35 nothing. Five minutes to go before halftime, and at halftime, you know some of the K-State faithful had already left. You know Bill Snyder family Memorial Stadium, and you really had to feel for Bill Snyder because. Things like this just don't happen to Kansas State often under his regime in the last 20 years. They just don't, you know, get blown out like this very often. In fact, at uh, home, it, it's really a rare occurrence, maybe in the late 80s and early 90s, but that was back when Kansas State football was dismal. Not now. In fact, Kansas State entering this game could have very well been undefeated if it weren't for the blown leads against TCU and Oklahoma State the two games prior, and maybe that had an impact on K-State. You know, maybe mentally they never got over uh, not being able to hold those big leads. And, of course, TCU was even worse because that game was at home, and it was an 18-point lead at halftime, and K-State got away from, from the run. But, again, give Oklahoma um, credit for playing a complete ball game. they got plenty of reserves in there. And again, even if you're the most optimistic Oklahoma Sooner fan, there's no way you could have imagined what happened today happening. Just... Just an absolute, with all due respect to K-State, just an absolute butt-whipping um, against the purple and silver from Manhattan. Just, you know, against Soon the Sooners under Bob Stoops, they never lose in Manhattan. In fact, you know, next year, Stiglione might want to tell the Big 12, hey, you know, we'll go to Kansas State and play. Because playing in, Man and playing in Norman can't beat them, but in Manhattan, Oklahoma can. And again, that's, that's, that's one of the weirdest trends. The, the road team, I think the last four or five years or six years, always seems, you know, the road team always seems to win. And in the case of Oklahoma, you know, they've had some some comfortable margins that they've won by in Manhattan. I mean, it's not like they've been complete nail biters. Um, you know, Bob Stoops has had his share of domination, but, but nothing like today. And th th this game really shows so many things. It shows that OU went prepared, and when they take a team seriously, no disrespect to Texas from last week, because Texas deserved to win, but when OU is, is focused and you know, 
that has that game plan performed to execution, you see that it could really be something big and, and their talent can perform to a level right close to maximum. And yeah, this was really a good matchup when you think about it because K-State, they specialize in that zone read. And if you can contain the zone read, you can contain the K-State offense because their passing game is not one of the best that you'll see. And today, K-State you know, couldn't run effectively, only two yards per carry, 65 total yards rushing, and through the air, only 5 of 22. Uh, Joe Humiter wasn't getting the job done in the first half, had two picks. And in the third quarter, he got yanked. Cody Cook, who was today's leading receiver and rusher, and even those numbers weren't impressive for K-State, threw an interception right after halftime. And Zach Sanchez, for the second time in his career, runs one back for a touchdown at the Little Apple in Manhattan. Did that two years ago. So it was 42 nothing at that point, and even more fans from uh, the stadium wearing purple and silver were exiting. Uh, what can you say about the Sooners? Came in well prepared. They came in playing about as good a football as you could play. And you got to be proud of those guys from Norman for the game that they um, showed today. Wonderful exhibition offensively and defensively. And the numbers don't lie. I mean, 30 first downs. K-State had seven. But here's the biggest stat of the game to me besides the three turnovers to zero. Which, by the way, that's, that's not Kansas State football. Kansas State does not beat itself. And today, OU had uh, no turnovers at all, and K-State had three. Quite different from the game a year ago um, in Norman, which K-State really took advantage of OU's mistakes. Here's the big stat, though. 568 total yards for OU, 110 total yards for Kansas State. And by the way, about 20 of those total yards occurred on K-State's final possession with just over um, a minute to go when it was pretty much around the clock time. So... What you can say about the Sooners, well, this really could lead to bigger and better things. And the next three games for the Sooners, they're going to be double-digit favorites in them. Home against Tech, at Kansas, and at home against Iowa State. So the Sooners very well conceivably could be 8-1 and one entering that gauntlet that we call at Baylor, TCU, and at Oklahoma State to wrap up the season. Chance to build up even more momentum, more confidence, and fix some things, and, you know, if there's one thing that you can say about the Sooners, if you were nitpicking, you know, offensive line naturally could still use room for improvement because, you know, they can hold their blocks for a little while, but maybe not as long as they should. And um, that's the one thing that you really have to look at. But it's really, really hard to nitpick 55 to nothing. It really, really is just a great job by Bob Stoops, by Mike Stoops, by Lincoln Riley, by the players, by, by Mayfield, by the defense. Uh, they were terrific. Even Frank Shannon got involved today. And remember, again, for the second straight game, no Devontae Bond, the high ankle sprain, still an issue. They didn't need him today. Sooners making their point that they are still a team you better take seriously, and they can still be an outstanding season uh, for OU. 55 nothing. Sooners crushed the Wildcats in Manhattan. Again, Bob Stoops 6-0 in Manhattan. And again, uh, dynamic no matter what happens against Texas the following week, still gets his team ready to play the week after Texas, and you saw the result. 55 nothing. We will have a um, weekly matchup show coming up next week sometime. Texas Tech coming to Norman. Tech wasn't one of their best games, but they did just enough to win at Kansas against um, the Jayhawks. We'll break down the Red Raiders and the Sooners, who will play in Norman, 2.30 kickoff, October 24th, ABC or ESPN2. Congrats to OU. We'll see if what happened in Manhattan on Saturday can continue to lead to big things. Good bounce back for the Sooners. Boomer Sooner.